Douglas and Dick Parco. Welcome to the Iconoclastic Wrestling Podcast. I'm Iconoclast. I am your host, Dick Tucker. And this week, we will try not to work ourselves. What did Hogan say? Work, don't work yourself. Don't feed to a shoot while working a shoot. Shoot working, Mark, motherfucker. Don't be horny, eat fruit. I don't know what he said. <laughs> be cool, eat fruit. That shit we went over last week? Yeah. Be, oh, Christ. Be cool, eat fruit. No, but That was it. That was it. No, no. That was the one catchphrase. The other catch... The other thing was the tweet where you used to talk about working yourself into a shoot. Yeah, I know. I'm just trying. I don't know if that I'm, was I'm just to choosing a, to ignore it. I don't know if that's awful. supposed to be about Bash at the Beach 2000, which I still don't understand. Why would you even care? Like, who, who the fuck cares? Because I'm still trying to understand what happened to Bash at the Beach 2000. Again, who cares? Like, what was... They the were on the way down. Shitstain doesn't know anything. He was on Pierce Morgan the other night. Did you hear about that Russo? shit? Russo... Oh, God, you would have been so pissed. Russo, Maven, <laughs> um, that Ch- that Charlie Caruso girl that we talked about last week, and Phil Mushnick, that miserable old fuck reporter for the New York Post that hates Vince. What'd they talk about? Is Vince... Oh, and Jonathan Coachman, too. Jo- Is Vince McMahon a psychopath or a sociopath? Well, duh... You shit on that girl. Let's talk about that. Why'd they bring on Maven? Well, because Maven will fucking talk anywhere if he gets paid a dollar. Yeah. It was awful. But I was like, I was telling your aunt, I was like, oh my God, he's going to be so fucking mad if I tell him Maven was on her. All we would need is Stevie Richards and he would just fucking lose it. Well, because I get pissed off when these wrestlers have these YouTube channels. and Like they're just, somebody. Yeah. Like, I mean, like Glenn yeah. Gilberti and, or Disco and Conan. Yeah. Like, well, that's what I forget. I think it was uh, Daniel Garcia talked about Glenn Gilberti, and he was basically saying, you know, it's, uh, you know these guys. Daniel are- Garcia should shut up because he ain't nothing yet. Hey, I think he's he- on his way. Maybe, maybe, he's maybe a, he's a future main eventer. Maybe of what AEW, the Vince Lombardi rest stop on the Jersey Turnpike. <laughs> Come Who's on, Vince Lombardi. Who's Vince Lombardi? I'm sorry, everyone. I'm sorry. I apologize for him now. Great. What is this? It's the, the it's who the trophy's named after the Super Bowl trophy. Is this some sports ball person? Oh my god! Anyway, what was I gonna? What was I saying? Who the hell uh, knows? No, so because I was speaking of two thousand WCW, which one of my doctorates is in. <laughs> uh, you know, watching two thousand. One of his many doctrines. I was watching doctrines. this thing about two thousand. How two thousand? I think I told you how two thousand one WCW was better than two thousand WCW. Yeah, because it's a lot shorter. It only lasts until March. I didn't know that Hogan had left before the before they. He ran Hogan. away from that. He smells when the, like you you know when there's no money. Like that Nash was still there, but Hogan left. Road Warrior Animal came back for some fucking reason. <laughs> Without Hawk, who he was, was still alive. Because like, like, let's look up the WCW Greed was their last show. Yeah, it's it's, it's sad. I saw that, and I saw the last Nitro. There was apparently another show on after the last Nitro that was like WCW Worldwide. Yeah, it was the recap show. Nobody fucking watched that. Nobody watched the recap shows back then. All right. Nobody had the internet pass like dial-up speed. Okay. Um, This show doesn't even have a results page. Uh, Did it get canceled? No, it didn't. But like, I'm Sin just- was one, too, wasn't it? Yeah, that was actually not that bad, from what I remember. Greed was the last show they did. Before that, the last, the, the other show was Super Bowl, Super Brawl Revenge. Yeah, that's always was February. And then Sid. So here we have. When did Sid snap his ankle like a twig? I don't know, brother. <laughs> but anyway, speaking of Vince being a sociopath earlier, that's no. What, well, I'm trying. That's to what find, we're ended up with no, today. Well, with I'm trying to find the matches here. The Rig Boy scandal. Which the main feud sure heading into Green was between Scott Steiner and DDP. Yeah, right there. I mean, I I mean, 
Color me impressed. The third match was Bam Bam Bigelow versus Sean Stasiak. Bam Bam would, would make him look unbelievable. That would be that was probably a great match. From what I can rem- I can't remember. The fourth match was Team Canada, Lance Storm and Mike Awesome versus Hugh Morris and Conan. Yes. Oh my God. The yeah, you're about you're about to eat your words, aren't you? About- uh I'm, the fifth match. Because, again, I have to go because Wikipedia doesn't have the usual setup for this one. The sixth match was between Totally Buff, Buff Blagwell and Lex Luger. Good concept of a team. And the natural-born thriller, Sean Ooh. O'Hare and Chuck Palumbo. That sounded really good. The eighth match, again, they only have like every other match here, was between Booker T and Rick Steiner for the United States Heavyweight Championship. Wow. That's, that's amazing. Shane Douglas also appeared. As what? The guy setting up the ring by this time? <laughs> what else was I going to talk about? Oh, yeah. I wanted to talk about um, how the longest championship reign in AEW history, which I believe is listed on Jeff Jarrett's official Wikipedia, is Jeff Jarrett is currently championships and accomplishments. Oh, no. This is what you want to talk about. No, a- AEW would be at the top. It, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre Deathmatch Championship. What the fuck How long is that? For? Since August 17th, 2023. Who cares? At the end, they gave him a belt. Was it him and Jeff Hardy? Yeah, do you remember that? That's the last time Jeff Hardy wrestled, wasn't it? I don't yeah. know. Like They were fighting all over the arena, and then they had some guy dressed up as Leatherface come out. Was it because of a game? Yeah, that was because they had the game come out. The Texas Chainsaw Massacre game. And then they gave Jeff H- Jarrett a belt that was never seen again. Yeah, so that's like saying, like I said the other night, that's like saying Pat Patterson's still fucking North American champion and he's dead. But anyway. Yeah, but Jeff Jarrett's still alive. All right. We're talking my world, my world, because now he's one of those. Do you ever listen to yourself on the show after you record it? No, I, you I told you. I never listened to the show after You couldn't stuff. carry a tune with a bucket. That's all I got to tell you. I, I know, because you were in a band. You were such a good... You are so cool. Shut up. Fuck off. No, but we're going to finish up today with the uh, Ring Boy scandal, which is goddamn ridiculous. Vince in trouble once again. Unbelievable. But before that, we got some news to go over here, so let's hit this shit hard. WWE and uh, Netflix are still in talks over Raw's runtime when it goes there. Why are they having such trouble with two hours? I heard like it, it's, it's got to be easier than doing three. Apparently, and it's they not. taped the one the other week. Apparently, it's not. The show feels really rushed. I've I've, I've read. Gee, because you have too many people. They still have too many people too. They are more selective now. And if you go back and watch the episode we did about the draft, you'd see that. Because even, I don't know. They drafted Odyssey Jones in 2023, and they drafted him again in 2024. Oh. Well, then. But anyway, two hours and cut a lot of people. That's what I got to say. Oh, also, I got to say one more thing. What? They, they, they released, like, the card thing, like, the match cards for Halloween Havoc on NXT. You might as well go over it right now, then. No, I is don't it really that bad? Oh, okay. I just got to talk about this. What the fuck is up with the giant fingers? What do you mean the giant fingers? We talked about this last week where they have to have, like, the way the match cards are, like, composed now. Everyone has giant hands. Oh, like, like the Stallone thing. Yeah, that's what it fucking looks like. like it's, has, but it's like the field of view, the point of view is off or something. Yeah, like, it's weird. Like the Maybe it's got to be like AI, like that picture of the blood... The blood, I must call them the Bloodhound Gang. The Bloodline in Look, the car for SummerSlam. Yeah, right? where it's it, like, like, does someone have a hand fetish over there or something? Like, what the fuck? Oh, I don't know. Hey, save that for later when we get to the court case. Like, we don't have foot fetish Mel Phillips. Like, Ooh. they, you know, and we have, you know, amazing match titles. Like, we have Obafemi versus Tony D'Angelo in a Bad tape. Cakes. Vegetables. In a tables, ladders, and scares match. Oh, Jesus. Halloween Havoc was always kind of hokey, too. Isn't that... In Say WC- that three times fast. Halloween Havoc was always kind of hokey. Isn't, this, isn't there something where they put Vader in an electric chair? No, they put Abdul the Butcher in the electric chair. That was 91. <laughs> I actually fucking ordered that. It was on opposite Game 7 of the World Series. <laughs> and you watched the... 
the first WCW pay per view I ever ordered, and it wound up on Joe Jarrell's floor, <laughs> infested with God knows what. And I was like, "You keep that, my gift to you. It's my way of saying thanks." I can't believe Abdullah's still alive. <laughs> you can't be. Hey, man, must, must, you lived in a bathtub all those years. So <laughs> must have had something to do with it. But then, well, um, it's like. Cause Hang on, we're getting it? off topic here. What the hell are we doing? Are we ever on topic? Nah, just keep going. Um, what what were we? Because uh, they, they do like something at Halloween Havoc now in NXT where they spin a wheel to decide. Spin the, the wheel, make the deal match. That was another fucking horrible creation in WCW. They did it in 92. <laughs> Jake Roberts versus Sting. Spin the wheel. Or wait a minute. Yeah. Spin the wheel, make the deal match. And then they did it again with Vader and Cactus Jack the next year. Wait. You spin and you have all these match types. When was Jake the Snake? 92 after he left the WWF. I didn't know Jake the Snake was ever in WCW. Jake the Snake was everywhere. He was like, you know, territory guy. He knew how to move around. But it was Jake Including the Snake on- versus Sting in a coal miner's glove match. <laughs> They used to have them down in Louisiana. Coal miner's glove, they're real thick. It's like, it hurt. Like, fucking, it's like it hit with a piece of armor. You got to go up on a pole and get it, and whoever gets to get it. Fire uses, Russo! Not the Viagra. Ugh. Is that any better than a Viagra on a pole match? Oh, it's a lot better. And then. At, at least that had a story behind it. The other one was Texas Deathmatch, Vader and Cactus Jack. Vader had legit injured Mick Foley, though. Power bombed them on the concrete floor because they didn't use mats around then. Well, again, um, Jake the Snake, of course, I remember him best for his Legends of Wrestling appearance. Oh. Playing Blackjack, you got 21, I got 22. Oh, I downloaded that after you told me about it. <laughs> Did you watch that it? That is fucking awful. It's amazing. Samantha Urban leaving WWE. Ricochet, Ricochet says she won't be joining him in AEW, at least not right away. Said she's going to concentrate on her music career. She said she didn't like ring announcing, wanted to do more, but they said they didn't see a fit for her. Moving on. <laughs> I don't know. Like, I don't really care. I, don't, I know. It's, it, it's, I know a lot of people like really like her as a ring announcer. I never did, but I know you 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 were very, you did not like her. You said I just think that she her voice isn't very good at projecting. I don't like female ring announcers anyway. I don't like female announcers in sports. I'm sorry, I don't. Well, it's because like, I'm older. You don't like women in sports at all. You don't like women's wrestling. You don't like... It's awful. God, you say that, and then... <sighs> now, some of shit. it's good. Willow Nightingale versus... To- no, no. Tony Storm versus Mariah May at All In. More better story than actual action, though. Oh, what? Oh, what? You got to bring out some kind of, like, Mula versus Wendy Richter from the 70s, talk about how great of a match that was, or some crap. No, no. Oh, speaking of, I saw this thing on Reddit. Someone found this thing from an old wrestling magazine from, like, the 70s. It's an ad where it says, you know, like, do you want to be a ladies wrestler? If you're a young girl between the ages of 18 and 24, send a swimsuit picture with your likes and dislikes to this address. And it's in Columbia, South Carolina. And apparently that was Moolah's address. Fuck yeah. Yeah, it's Moolah's trafficking. Oh, my God. She was disgusting. Like, she was... I, my whole childhood's ruined, you know, right? Between this ring boy thing, the dark side of the ring ruined, but that page I have from the internet from 25 years ago. What page you have? The one I was talking about with all the gross stuff. <laughs> Sid with the squirrel in his pants. That one guy, who was the guy that killed all the, remember that one guy? He killed all the hookers in Mexico and he just left. You know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah, I forget what wrestler it was. Is it, is it Julio? Is it Estrada or something? <laughs> He threw a hooker off a roof <laughs> and then left the country. I shouldn't be laughing. But I, sure you should. It's so ridiculous. I was speaking of stupid stories. I know I told this to you over the phone, but the audience hasn't heard me tell this. We okay. were ta- I was talking to my co-host here on the phone on like Friday night. Uh, and um, I was telling the story when X-Pac was on uh, Sean Oliver's show. I think he was talking to and this is when it before X Pac was clean. So he's telling all these fucking stories while he's like half high. Uh, and he's telling this story of how it's from like the early 90s where he's in a car with Chris Candido and Sonny and Shawn Michaels were supposed to be in a different car. Go tra- For some reason, they were traveling separately. And then X Pac tells this story where he's supposed to be like, he says, you know, I'm like super high. 
And, you know, I can see Chris is driving and he's nervous. And I just go, don't worry, Chris. They're not having sex right now, man. I, I swear to you. Don't worry about it. <laughs> so horrible. I remember the one watching, like, the first... I remember I tried having Mother Wayne watch the first ECW pay-per-view. And Chris Candido... Barely legal 97? Yeah. And Chris Candido cuts a promo in the ring. And he starts talking about, you know... I used to be at, I was at WrestleMania last year with my girl, whose name I'm not allowed to say. It, it was weird. Yeah, he was, he was, that, that, that's a tragic story. Chris Candido? Yeah, about th- their relationship. Skip? Skip and Sonny. Then there was Skip and Zip, I think, was <laughs> Dr. Tom Pritchard. This year. And then Louis Spicoli tried to get in there. He was Rad Radford. <laughs> then he went to WCW and then he died. And then he feuded. Hey, 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 died. He feuded with Barry Horowitz. <laughs> best Barry job. was over. Be- best job or ever. Jack Perry wishes he was as over as Barry fucking Horowitz. Oh, cry me a river. Shut up. Rod Breaker regains IC title. I'm pretty sure they only gave Jay the IC title to make Rikishi stop complaining. Maybe. Have you always seen that? Like how Rikishi would... Rikishi's got a podcast like everyone does, and he would go on there and complain that Jay's not being used properly. Yeah, but they want to put him back with probably with Roman and them. They have to have original. Well, they blood. did that last night. Oh, they did? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, then that's or, why. Or, or they did it on SmackDown, and then I saw that they recorded SmackDown for next week, and they confirmed a match where it's going to be Roman, Jay, and Jimmy versus three members of the new bloodline at Crown Jewel. Oh, who cares? I'm not watching Crown Jewel. Yeah, I might have to boycott that, too. HBK says they're taking it slow with Julia and Stephanie McKeer due to language barriers, and WWE also files trademark of Stephanie McKeer. Took them that long? They're really high on her, man. Like, don't milk her to death, though. I mean, she's actually a very good wrestler. Oh, please, tell WWE not to milk someone to death, please. I was kind of hoping that she was going to go to AEW. Me, too. Fuck you, Roman. Do, do, do you remember that? Yeah, of course I do. In like 2013 or something where he tried to like talk on Raw and for 10 minutes the crowd just kept chanting at him. Yep. That's when he was the big dog, right? Yeah, what was he, the thing he, where he was, we, we used to call him dog shit. Well, what was the, the thing dog. where he was feuding with Baron Corbin and Baron Corbin covered him in dog food? Yeah, because he was the big dog. Well, to highlight of Baron Corbin's career. It took so long to get Roman over the way they did it. Hey, but Baron's got good theme music. I am the darkness. I am the thunder. I come from hell and I'll pull you under. You actually sound really like oh, very, wait, heavy metal. Of, very heavy metal when you do that. Speaking of my voice, did you see my Undertaker impression last night? No. You didn't see what I texted you? No, I... The, the audio thing? Yeah. Oh, is that what that was? Yeah, I was doing Undertaker. I'm sorry, dude. I was like baked. I was like, I didn't, I was just like, what the fuck is this? Uh, yeah, because I, I had to clear my throat and I talked for a second and I was like, holy shit, I sound exactly like The Undertaker. Yeah, I'll have to listen to it now because I'll tell you if you didn't. Because so. I was watching again, I had to watch again uh, this week uh, when The Undertaker ascending to heaven. <laughs> Royal Rumble 94. <laughs> Fucking ridiculous. I remember that. I was 15. I was like, I just turned 15 a month before that. And I was like, are they fucking, fucking, they're fucking with me right now. But the rumble was good. The spirit of the Undertaker will never rest in peace. (laughs) Fucking awful. I'm like, they're insulting my intelligence. And they have like lightning strike. But how about the whole heel locker room emptied out? Everybody, even people you didn't care, about. people you didn't know there for years, like conquistadors, come on up. You know, <laughs> it's like what the they Orient did. Express. They're still there. Tenru, they flew him in. It's like what they did. In Tenru the- and the Great Kabuki were hired by Mister Fuji to take out Lex Luger. <laughs> it's like what they did in AEW at so good. Yeah, but it was at, done right. At, at, it's like what they did in AEW at Wrestle Dream, where all the faces ran out. And they did something similar on Dynamite this past week. And I didn't watch Dynamite because I had a thing to do for school where uh, they had all, all the faces were in the parking lot with weapons. Yeah. Waiting for But it lot. wasn't it like a go-go and solo and... No. Camarado. No, they weren't there. 
John uh, Silver was there with nunchucks. Yeah, were they were they as big as he was? Oh my god! Top flight. Ah. Did Mars did did Moxley just come up with the the fucking? You know who's going to save everybody, right? Who? The elite. They're going to save everybody. It's going to be the whole payoff to this fucking horrible story. Oh, whatever. No, because that kind of went over like a you know a fucking. Well, fart in church. I was reading something that the reason that that elite takeover storyline fizzled out is because they're a bunch of pussies. No, it's because Tony Khan didn't want to have like the impression that he wasn't the one making all the decisions all the time. <sighs> it, like, in kayfabe. So they changed it midway through. That did have a really good match, though, at Double or Nothing. What? Uh, the Elite versus the AEW feud. Yeah. Darby. Um, I, forget I just can't wait till somebody gets killed, or at least seriously hurt on that, that shit. Between but, the fire... They hitting the guys with the cars, which they've done more than once. Isn't this? Well, isn't that, isn't I this don't this? feel as bad about the Matt Hardy drowning now because when he kept coming up, he was a <laughs> he was a different character. Every isn't time. that what they just did in the ECW though? No, I mean they pushed the envelope. Like nobody really. New Jack and Sabu pushed the envelope. Some of the other guys were like some guys were just there to wrestle, like Danny Doring and fucking Amish Roadkill. <laughs> One of my favorites. Amish Roadkill. Wouldn't he just go, bah! No, he was just this big dude. He was just like he was Amish. <laughs> the Blue Meanie. <laughs> Chris Chetty, Christopher Daniels. These guys were there to wrestle. I mean, they got their poor asses kicked. But I mean. It's weird seeing Danielson with hair back then, but it's him. He's got the fucking tattoo right here. The little uncle. But we got to see the, um, I mean, because that's when Darby set Jack Perry on fire. Cody set himself on fire that one time. That's ridiculous. But anyway, finally in WWE news until we circle back around, uh, WWE accused of running campaign to discredit Dave Meltzer. <laughs> does like, I mean, does he need any help with that? <laughs> I mean, like, seriously, tell me what you think. Why is no. that even printed? Is, is, is that leaked by him? Where'd you get that from, Sports Skeeta? No, dude, don't you ever say that? I never get anything from them. <laughs> Lee Cole. Lee Cole. Lee Cole, dude, is is on with... He, that's where he had a ring boy scandal. He, he had fucking David Bixen span on there. He's a world-famous writer for Rolling Stone that broke the fucking story. Like, he, you know, he's... I'm, this guy's awesome. He's like Walter Cronkite. Fuck Brian Alvarez. Uh... Nick Nemeth said on Busted Open Radio he thinks Mercedes Monet should be pulled from AEW TV until fan interest spikes. I wouldn't mind that. Would you? Who cares? They have another pay-per-view at the end of November. Yeah. Full. She 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 does suck big balls though. Like let's just let's, let's not gloss over that. Mercedes? Oh, she's awful. C E O Mercedes. She's like a She's like a it's like a Pontiac Fiero. She's not a Mercedes. What's wrong with a Pontiac? They don't, they don't make them anymore. No, Fiero, dude. They were. You don't even know. Go look up Pontiac Fiero. It's a piece of shit. <laughs> Ricochet attack. Take a shit at the Forge and Excellence show. I didn't know that when we covered it last week. Did you know that? That's not a bad looking car. Yeah, but they were like, there was something wrong with them. It was like, I should have just. All right, I should said. What if I said Pinto? We would understand. What's a Pinto? Never mind. Moving on. Thanks to Stephanie Vakir, AEW and NJPW are trying to enact a rule that stops anybody that works a joint show from jumping to WWE. Well, Sounds sense. like sour grapes to me, though. Well, it makes sense. They don't want someone, you know, pulling out of a show a week ahead of time. Like, she didn't pull it. Yeah, but she didn't pull out of that show. No, but she pulled out of other shows like Battle in the Valley. Oh, for what? Mexico or no, New Japan? There was a New Japan show like the next week or two weeks from then. Okay. And she pulled out. I was not aware of that. Sting, Sting said Vince McMahon pushed him to retire after Night of Champions 2015. Wanted him to retire under WWE umbrella, and I wrote, after he buried him against Triple H at WrestleMania 31, and Rollins almost crippled him at Night of Champions 2015. I never really liked Seth Rollins. But he's, he's not safe. I watched that happen. That was around the same time. He was definitely not safe around then. When he broke he, Cena's nose. Oh, my God. It was awful. Adam Cole confirms that him and Britt Breaker have split up. 
Yeah. We pretty much had heard that before, but this is him confirming it. I also want to say... I mean, I, I guess when he started to weigh less than she does, she got a little jealous. Well, I started to see something that the Undisputed Kingdom are back to being mm. like... Losers. Yeah. Some would say they never stopped, They're like me. To, like, like Roger Strong is back to yelling, Adam! Hey, Adam! It's like the last year just didn't fucking happen. Yeah. Kind of yeah. like what, you know, I wish they did to the last three Star Wars movies. Well, I'm just saying, this whole NJF Adam Cole storyline, I was talking to you over the phone earlier this week. I was really trying to give them the benefit of the doubt that they would pull this off, and they did That's didn't. your fucking problem. I told you not to get excited. Because MJF had a really, had, was, has, was doing some really good heel stuff recently. His storyline with, with, with Osprey leading up to All In, I personally really liked it. His match with Osprey at All In. Uh, well, um, uh, MJF. MJF. Yeah, I would think when um, he was America's champion. Yeah, that was pretty good. They yeah. did some fucking crazy shit, and it was just starting to get dark around that time of the match. That was your cousin's birthday, remember? Yeah. So Chris Jericho wins ninth world title, ROH, defeating Mark Briscoe in a dynamite ladder match with help from Big Bill. Yeah, Big Bill carried him up the ladder. Oh, my God. And I wrote, why? Also, Briscoe blades himself during match twice in full view of the camera. I didn't see Dynamite, so I can't speak to that. Yeah. I saw it. It was said. I'm surprised that Mark. Do you have any, do you have any, uh, you know, respect for your trade? Where did you learn your trade, you stupid fucking cunt? You idiot. God. All these old heads like you got to talk about respect for the business and kayfabe and. Well, you can't bring kayfabe back as much as you could try. I uh, don't know. There's a difference between being respect between like unrealistically trying to keep kayfabe and then the and then and then there's the Whataburger six. Oh, that's that that's bad. That's the worst. It's bad. It's like Bobby That's where Heenan, I draw the line. Bobby Heenan said years ago, he goes, We never said it was real. You people said it was fake. Yeah. But now there is no more kayfabe, so Hologram apparently injured at Wrestle Dream and will be out several weeks. Uh I like hologram. Yeah, well, it's your fucking problem. You know, I've seen this thing of like things that would be different if Vince was booking AEW. And oh, uh, who the hell can speak to that? Like, and like, nobody knows what goes on in that psycho's head. And like, one of the things was all of the lucha doors would be in one faction. Satnam Singh would be world champion. He would be like the permanent like crown jewel champion. And uh, finally, Meltzer thinks main event of Full Gear is going to wind up being Moxley and Orange Cassidy. What do, What do you think? That'd be great. I think. <sighs> I'd have to see how they're building it up. Well, I told if you, Shane Mo McMahon really is coming. No, I don't, which think, I don't think so either. I told you they're doing something now where Moxley's targeting Chuck Taylor to get it yeah. Cassidy. Wow, what? Because if you remember, they had Talk a about an equal opportunity ass kicker. They they had a rivalry about a year ago, if you remember, over the international championship. Yeah, I remember. They had some good matches. Yes, they did. That's because Cassidy made him look good. God, you really fucking hate Moxley. I do. No, they're two great wrestlers. All right, let's hit the Bound for Glory results before we go to the Ring Boy thing. Maybe we won't be doing such a long show today. All right. Do you want to do the results since you didn't see them? Sure, I'll look through them right now. Just let me pull them up. Well, what is this, Bound for Glory 2024? Yeah. Did you watch the clip I said the other day of Shelton Benjamin getting hit with the kick and doing the kick? Did you watch that? Shelton, Wasn't that they, badass stuff? They are booking Shelton Benjamin really well in AEW. He is just beating everyone's ass. Watch the match they had him do with Leo Rush. Leo Rush is a jobber to the stars. He's like the Jay Lethal of, T of uh, AEW. Well, Jay Lethal's still in AEW. He doesn't do anything. Hall of Fame inductions. Rhino was inducted into the Hall of Fame. I watched it. It was not bad. I watched the pre-show. And, and Bob I... Ryder, posthumously, online wrestling journalist, who was co-founder of TNA along with Jerry and Jeff Jarrett. Yep. Ash by Elegance and Heather by Elegance with the personal concierge. Who's Heather by Elegance? Do we I know don't know. She... she doesn't have a hyperlink. I see that. Oh, you're on Wikipedia? Yeah. yeah that's the best place to go. 
uh, with the personal concierge, again, from what I know, Ash by Elegance is just a ripoff of Timeless Tony Storm. Yeah. Defeated Zia Brookside and Brin- Brinley Reese. Frankie Kazarian won the 20 person intergender call your shot gauntlet match by last eliminating Rhino. That was too fucking long. That was 26 minutes of ridiculous shit. And let me pull, go down to the bottom. We had Frankie Kazarian, Zachary Wentz, Jake something, Trey Miguel, Hammerstone, Rohit Raiju. Well, let's just talk about the falling star of Alex Hammerstone. Jesus Christ. Laredo Kid, Sammy Callahan. Laredo Bush- Kid lasted two seconds. They threw him. Oh, 100 pounds it's on It's like Chelsea Green from like the 2021 or 2022 Women's Royal Rumble. Do you remember that? Oh, she, yeah. She walked right in. Rhea Ripley picked her up, threw her right off the other side. Uh, Boo Pinder Gajar, Trent Seven, Casey Navarro, Rhino, Tasha Steeles, Lei Ying Li, Jason Hotch, Leon Slater, Jonathan Gresham, JDC, AJ Francis. AJ Francis, Alvin and the Chipmunks, Father Guido Sarducci. How many fucking people are in this match? <laughs> Who's, hey, well, there was a time when the full blooded Italians made an appearance during the pandemic. Moving Tony on. Tony Mavalook and Guido Maritano. Moving on. First match of the main show Mike Bailey defeated El Hijo del Vikingo, defending the X Division title. Wow. How's El Hijo del Vikingo? Uh, wasn't he hurt? Yeah, but he's apparently like the only per- good person in AAA, and everyone wants him to leave AAA. Because they got Conan! Conan! What are you doing, Conan? <laughs> the hell, Conan? Keep, keep Spitfire, keep... Jody Threat, and Danny Luna defeated Rosemary and Wendy Chu to, by pinfall to defend the Knockouts World Tag Team Championship. Jason Alexander, Josh Alexander, not Jason Alexander. <laughs> 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 George, George, what are you doing? George is getting upset. George, until you pin me, Festivus is not over. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Josh Alexander defeated Steve Macklin by technical submission. How come you didn't call him by his Christian name, Walmart Kurt Angle? That he is Walmart Curtis. I know you coined him that. Fourteen minutes and thirty-two seconds. Steve Macklin, very good grappler, though. Um, I could see that. PCO defeated Matt Cardona. And Fuck Mon- him. He needs to go away. <laughs> he's like, Matt Cardona. He's like gonorrhea. He keeps coming back. It's he's the, terrible. He's the king of the Indies. There is no Indies. <laughs> Tony Baltimore. He only booked him twice. He was at the first ever All In show, I think. Yeah, he was there. So is Stephen Amell. Yeah, hey, Stephen Amell had an ex with Christopher Daniels. I know, I watched that. He was... He, he, I have that. That's a hell of a fucking show. It is. It's a hell of a fucking show. Been a big fucking deal. Um, yeah, PCO defeated... Well, first of, ever non... The first show since like 1990 that wasn't WCW or WWE affiliated to sell over 10,000 tickets. Yep, big deal. Uh, PCO defeated Matt Cardona in 13 minutes, 16 seconds by pinfall in a Monsters Ball match for the TNA Digital Media Championship and the International Heavyweight Wrestling Championship. Mike Santana defeated Moose in 13 minutes and 49 seconds. Masha Slamovich defeated Jordan Grace by pinfall in 20 for the TNA Knockouts World Championship. I, I, yeah, I, um, uh, I couldn't believe that. I, I couldn't believe that. Surprisingly, this is not the main event. Nick Nemeth defeated Joe Hendry by pinfall with Frankie Kazarian as the special referee. Um, well, let's let's be honest. With interference from JBL. JBL. No, no, he's not JBL. He's, he's John Layfield. We have to, I have, to, I, have to, I, have to, I have to retract that. Yes, it's John Layfield, but he's in DNA. But he was clotheslining people right out of their shoes, man. And then the main event, the Hardys, Matt and Jeff Hardy, defeated the system. Yeah, Ryan Myers and The two Ed fat Edwards. fucks? Yeah. With Alicia Edwards and ABC. Uh, Who I liked. 27 minutes and 25 seconds. It was a three-way full metal mayhem <coughs> match. They had a decent crowd there, though. I don't know if the um, uh, attendance is on here. No, it's not there yet. Wayne State Fieldhouse. They put Rhino in because it was in Detroit. So, All right, I think that covers all the news. You want to get into it or you want to stop and take a break? Or? No, just do the fucking Ring Boy scandal. <sighs> 
let's get out of here. You haven't talked about what is up on the uh, TV right now. Oh, it's uh, we're watching to our viewers. We're watching Kobashi. The, the, my uh, my uh, my co-host has a 12-hour compilation of Kobashi's entire GHC title run, and right now we got Mizawa versus Kobashi. Must be pre-2009 because you know Mizawa yeah. would be dead. What's he? Mizawa's trying to hit him with a tiger driver. Yeah, but these are good. These are very good matches, but. All right, anyway, as everybody probably knows by now about the Vince McMahon and Linda McMahon and TKO Group Holdings being sued by John Doe's 1 through 5, who are former ring boys. This all goes back to Trump, because it's that when Trump, uh, when Trump, uh, that, that woman, that E. That e. Jean e. Carroll. Yeah, E. Jean Carroll sued yeah. for $80 million. I know, and there's no statute of limitations now, which is good, I mean, because this is like long-lasting effects these people have, you know. Yeah. So, but yeah, they're suing them. Oh, here we go back to the thing right there. Making sure we're still recording. Sorry. First time I ever done this. But anyway, yeah. So, what they're alleging is Mel Phillips, who I actually, I won't say I have some attachment to because I don't, but I stood. Did he go to prison for this? No, he's dead. Oh. Oh, it's horrible what happens here. There's so much redacted shit in this and everything. I mean, it's like, it's really, really bad. And there's a videotape that where they sh believe they show Mel Phillips and his unusual foot fetish issues with a kid that the FBI had. And I had only, I had heard about this tape years ago. I thought it was like a myth. But the FBI had it and they were using it against him try to get him to turn against Vince at the steroid trial. Oh. You believe that shit? That's the worst fucking part. But there he is, right there on the screen, Mel Phelps. He was the ring announcer at the Philadelphia Spectrum. Like I said to you before, I stood close to him as probably closer than I am to you right now. And uh, he always had kids around him. I mean, I'm sure your grandfather was standing behind me. I was like nine years old. No way he was going to. But that was cool back then. You used to be able to run up to the railing and like, try to high-five him and all that. They didn't have no ramps. He just walked out on the runway. But yeah, but they're basically saying that Linda and Vince knew about it and covered it up. And they did pay off Tom Cole, that Lee Cole's brother. So. And he was one of the ring boys? Yeah, he's sadly, he's no, no longer with us now. He committed suicide in 2021. So. Here's another not so nice shot of uh, Mel with some uh, boys. Yeah, apparently he was a Philadelphia native. Uh, used to drug cruise around Kensington and um, uh, pick up like street kids. Like, hey, you want to see a championship belt? And he had like the WWF tag team belts with him, the Iron Sheik's Persia clubs. He was grooming them. And then he would like wrestle them in their underwear and stuff. Like, there was no like sex going on, but just he had a foot fetish too. It was like always like tickling feet for like hours at a time. That's not, and that's not really. And that's not really out that ordinary for people from Kensington. I knew a guy told me one time, he goes, do you remember that kid? Remember that guy in Kensington? He was in the park. He was offering kids money to sniff their shoes and shit. And I was like, yeah. And I said to this old woman one time, she goes, yeah, that's such and such. She knew who he was. That's what I mean. These kids in Kensington, they're not like, wow. Yeah, but Phil Phil Muchnick had a lot to do with this back then. That miserable prick that writes for the New York Post. So uh, he wrote a series of columns about the sex abuse of the Ring Boys, and then he apparently got a lot of mail. He said, you don't even know the half of it. So, but yeah, the uh, but it, it it all had it all has to do with the um, uh, steroid trial to the FBI trying to get him to turn Vince against the steroid trial. I mean, you could read through it on your own about that. I don't fucking. I'm not about to go through with it to get all that, so. But, uh, what do you think about this? Sounds awful. Why didn't he go to prison? Because I told you, there's Tom Cole right here. He's, uh, they actually didn't use this picture. It actually gave him, uh, according to, uh, David Bixen's fan, he uh, gave him a panic attack when he saw it. Because he's, that's Lee Cole's brother that sued him and the whole Donahue show and everything else. So if this was so public, why wasn't he arrested? Why didn't I, he go to prison? I don't know. I, I have no idea, but this had to do with it. Then it started coming out about, you know, Terry Garvin. And let me just tell you about Terry Garvin and Pat Patterson. 
all the jokes now that which they really did on TV. Uh, Gorilla Monsoon saying during a match on primetime uh, wrestling. You know, Mel Phillips would say this match will knock your socks off. It's fucking horrible. And he said some of the guys when the guys would be covering up in the corner, he'd be like, "Oh, here they're uh, they're studying from the Terry Garvin Pat Patterson School of Self Defense." So they knew what was going on. Well, what was Terry Garvin and Pat Patterson doing? They were like trying to fuck, like Terry Garvin was fucking the ring boys. I know Pat Patterson would abuse his position to try to uh, sexually assault the talent. Oh, and he's creepy looking too, man. Pat of Patterson. All the, yeah, I mean, Garvin is too. But Pat Patterson, when him and Briscoe had the bra and panties match years ago and they dressed up like women, Pat was like a handsome older woman. I mean, like really, it was awful. But... uh yeah, so they all got fired, but Pat had to get brought back because Pat's a wrestling savant genius, you know. And uh, he really didn't have anything to do with the Ring Boy scandal. Pat was trying to, like, you know, rape grown men. I mean, I mean, thank God for that, right? I mean, of all, I mean, of all the things we're talking about here, so it was generally known by everybody. Bret Hart said something about it in the Mister McMahon documentary. They cover it in the Mister McMahon documentary, which I know you probably gave up on after. I didn't watch it at all. Once I heard how soft it was, I didn't watch it. It wasn't really that soft. There's Mel Phillips again. The most the thing is too, I'm uh I'm surprised, and this isn't a racial thing, but I'm surprised that he's like this big of a sex pervert weirdo and he's black. They're usually like these weirdos like that. They're usually it's like serial killers. They're mostly white and in their thirties. No comment. Well, yeah, here's Mel Phillips picking up uh, the Kenzo kids that have been look. He's holding the holding the. Uh, Who took these pictures? I don't know. They've never been seen until now. But that's um the actual tag belt from around 1985. Like, did he take these pictures? Probably. So how did who who has them? Uh, I I guess the FBI or something. Which again continues to raise the question of why wasn't he arrested for this? Not sure, my uh, nephew there. Yeah, but I mean, this is the crazy. I mean, the fact that we got to cover two two things like this in a year. I mean, it's not even a year. It's been 10 months. Well, this has always happened in wrestling. It's always happened in the world is the thing, too. Yeah, we're back here. Like I said, this is, yeah, this is like around WrestleMania 1 tag belts. Barry Windham and Mike Rotunda and the Sheik and uh, Volkoff. Mike Rotunda, was he IRS? Yes, he was. Trying to see what else we got going on. Or when our but this apparently went on, yeah, from 1979 till around 1992. And Vince, they fired him for about six weeks, gave him a payoff of three hundred thousand dollars, and then Vince brought him was back. Fired? No, Vince fired Mel Phillips for this. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, for bringing, I guess, the negative attention, he had to know it was going on. But uh, yeah, he fired him, and six weeks later, he brought him back, saying, "You got to stay away from kids." Like, what the fuck is that? Yeah, up here on the screen now, talking about how he was uh, talking about how Mike Tomei, a rookie referee, made the mistake of telling Mike Tomei. No, not Mike Tomei. Mike Tomei. Uh-huh. Mel, Mel Torme. He woke up in a hotel room when Mel Phillips was naked, straddling him at the foot of his bed, sucking hard on his big toes. Like fucking weirdo. I mean, this is crazy shit. These poor kids must have been scared to death. I, I can't imagine. When I first heard this, I was so upset. But didn't hasn't this been known for decades? At this point? Yeah, but it's never been dealt with. Kind of like the plane ride from hell. Yeah, I mean, like, well, Ric Flair got in trouble for that again. It could cost yeah, him money again. I yeah, mean, but he didn't really get in trouble the first time. Yeah, yeah, you. Yeah, but it's not like he went and flung his penis at her again, and then he got drunk and apologized to her on Twitter, like, in the past year or so, and I'm like, dude, that could be, like, the direct, uh, directly, you know, ignoring a restraining order or something. Uh, no, he's on wife number seven now, or six, or... Is he done with wife number six? Yeah, he got divorced. Count C, around 108, the WWE's culture of tolerating and fostering sexual misconduct went all the way to the top of the company. We well, yeah, wow. know that. <laughs> Duh. Well, now we do. 2024 has been an enlightening year. 
Okay, okay, play the flushing sound effect. <laughs> <laughs> Vid, this talks about how Vid's paid out the $14.6 million. We've covered that in great detail. The sexual abuse background is alleged WWE culture. Ouch! Here we go. Ring boy Tom Cole said he was harassed by several WWE employees when he was a minor, including one employee who filmed him while fondling his feet and um, uh, masturbating while the other guy grabbed his genitals. Wow, that is fucking graphic. Billy Jack Hades, probably nobody listened to him either, has said something about it because, you know, why would you listen to him? Because he's a nut bar. <laughs> of course, Billy Jack, our one true savior. David Koresh. Billy Jack, the one true messiah. Oh, for right? crying out loud. Barry Orton. Nicole Bass filed a sexual harassment. I can't believe that. What? I, I, I wouldn't. I mean, she was gross. I wouldn't fuck her with somebody else's dick. God, why do you hate Nicole Bass? She's a, I, thought, I don't know. I thought she was a dude, which I don't care. I mean. Remember she was in Private Parts, the Stern movie? Yeah, he made her cry on the show. I, I heard that one. All right, what they have here is just going through a lot of the shit about Vince and the case, which I don't, we, we, we've done that to death. There's nothing new there. God, I hope something new comes out with that soon. That'd be fucking great. When he gets in trouble, something's going to, something made like between the two of these, this is a jury trial too, you know. This isn't like civil. No, well, what do you mean it's not civil? It's not civil. It's not about lawsuit. money. Yeah, but it's not about money. Well, I was going to say, you know, a jury you know, civil trials are still decided by a jury for the, a lot of the time. But. Phillips' misconduct and indictment uh, part E, including his foot fetish, was sexual abuse. Absolutely it was. It's fucking creepy. They actually name Phillips as a pedophile on count 160. This is just disturbing to me, though, because like I told you, my childhood's been ruined because of all this. John Doe. Now, here, here we have the names of everybody. Well, John Doe. John Doe 1 was 13 years old when he met Phillips in 1981-82 outside a venue hosting a WWE event. Told him he could get him in. He worked there. Put him in a private room. Began hugging him and touched his... Never mind. How much of this is there? Well, we're almost to the end here, so... It's a lot. It's 82 pages. The Vince one was 62. This is 20 pages longer. I'm just going. John Doe, number two, met him. Uh, he was 13 years old. I mean, if anybody's trying to, I'm sure somebody's going to have a show trying to figure out who these people are, like they did with the Vince shit, remember? Because people actually named him. Brandon Thurston. He was, you know, Thurston Hal the third. He got it. Now look at this picture. He's holding the kid down. Again, who took these? And read that. Phillips often traveled in his own vehicle while the, with the boys. John Doe, too, witnessed this to some other people as well. Similarly abused young other boys by Mel Phillips. Psychologically manipulated them. He attended wrestling shows. This kid, Jan, John Doe, number two, went to shows with this fucking Phillips for five years between Maryland, Pennsylvania, Rhode Island, Massachusetts, Connecticut, and New York. Holy shit. Bob Saget. John Doe number three met Philip in the mid-80s. What about Bob Saget? Did you ever see Tourette's guy when he gets upset? He goes, oh, Bob Saget! No. Oh, well, then you wouldn't fucking get it. This uh, John Doe three met Phillips in the mid-1980s when he was 14 years old. During the show at the Spectrum, they went to dinner and then brought him back to the hotel. He liked to wrestle them and, you know, apparently got a little excited. We'll just... Leave it at that. Here's Mel in the ring announcing a match with Sergeant Slaughter. Most likely it's Spectrum. Sergeant Slaughter. Yeah, man. What did you say the one promotion was? Where AWF. Was the AWF where yeah. he's a wrestler and they had like rounds like it was boxing. Yeah. Here, look. We got kids in the front row put there by Mel Phillips at D Spectrum. Ah. Son of a bitch. John number five was 15 in 1984. Somebody said they're like around your mom's age. There's Ken Patera before he went to jail. Oh, yeah, for throwing the boulder through a burger shop. If he just would have admitted he'd done it, it would have been like a $500 fine. Who is it? Ken Patera and Mr. Fuji? Mr. Saida. Oh. 
Here's here's a here's a special comment in here. John Doe Five was transported by Phillips across state lines after being tr- transported across state lines. John Doe Five was subject to the harassment and abuse described herein. And here we have John Doe One is from Massachusetts, as is John Doe Two. Three is from Pennsylvania. Four is from Florida. Five is from Pennsylvania. They use pseudonyms because of this highly personal nature. And the defendants are Vincent K. McMahon and Linda McMahon, as well as TKO Holdings, a part of Endeavor Entertainment. Ari Emanuel is going to be sorry he ever bought this pig. That's all I got to say. Yeah. I mean, so that's about it. I mean. Yeah, they'll send the rock out to try to deal with it. They'll just come out and be like, you do not fuck with the final boss. God, I hate I hate him so much. I know you do. You would have lost it on that Piers Morgan show, though, with that fucking Maven. Maven. You would have fucking lost it. Maven and Steve. Like, like at least Stevie Richards was in the business a lot longer, so he has a little bit more clout. Just but, a little. Just a little. But, like, Stevie Richards is most known for getting beat up by Raven. Yeah, and it was only over in ECW. And then Maven, what did he do? He, he won Tough Enough? The first he, ever Tough Enough. He accidentally eliminated The Undertaker. Oh, and he paid for it. What was it? They had Benoit, Hardcore Holly, and Eddie Guerrero coming No, out. that was Daniel Pooter. That was 05 Rumble. Oh. This was 01. It was still WWF. But, um... So I told you, this show might not be that long. We're only at 50 minutes. So we can, uh... Just get that out of the fuck out of here. If you want. All right. We, we got anything else to talk about? All right. Uh, so crowd Jewel next weekend. Uh, well, if anything crazy happens on we here, we'll review about it. I don't know if I'm watching it either because I got problems with that shit. As do I. All right. Uh, be cool. Eat fruit. And signing off. Good night, everybody. Get your hand off my penis.